Hi, in this example, we're going to find the length of this ladder such that it is the shortest ladder that will reach over this wall and to the building. Now, we don't know much about the ladder itself except that it goes from the ground right above the wall and to the building. We know that the wall is 10 feet and we know that the wall is two feet from the building. So the most obvious thing to try is similar triangles where we have the first similar triangle that I think is the most obvious one here. But then the other similar triangle may not be so obvious. So I want to go ahead and highlight that it wouldn't make sense to make the other similar triangle the larger one because we don't know much about this length here from the wall to the end of the bottom of the ladder. But it does make sense to use this two feet from the building to the wall in this smaller triangle above, which can be similar triangles. We do know a little bit about geometry and we know that um, interior angles are congruent. And so if this is uh, theta, then this is also theta. Okay, and then this is also two feet. So we can almost see the triangle themselves. So let me go ahead and take those out. So now we can see that this triangle here, where this is going to be 10 feet, here's theta, and then this part of the ladder, we're going to call it to be the first part of the ladder, L1. The smaller part of the ladder, so the smaller um, right triangle, right, where this is theta, and this is two down here for two feet, and this will be the second part of the ladder. So if we do that, we know that we can create a function such that we can add up this first part of the ladder plus the second part of the ladder. So this second um, right triangle was not as obvious as this first one, but it is there and it exists and it, we can write it in terms of theta. The other piece that we always want to look out for is our goal. When we're doing these problems, we always want to make sure that we keep our eye on the prize and answer the question in that it is asking. And our goal is to find the shortest ladder. So if the ladder itself is L, then the shortest ladder, the word shortest is our red flag to tell us that we are looking at a minimum. So we want to go ahead and minimize the length of the ladder. Now um, the length of the ladder is represented by the variable L as we assigned. Great, so in order to minimize the length of the ladder, we need to create a function for the ladder, for the length of the ladder, and take the first derivative, find critical numbers, and test those and verify that that value will make the ladder a minimum length. So let's go ahead and build our function. We drew pictures, we assigned variables, we have our goal. So now we can go ahead and build our model, right? Build a formula. So the first thing I would do is rewrite each L in um, terms of a trigonometric function. So the first one for L1, notice that I could take sine of theta would be 10 over L1. So sine of theta is equal to 10 over L1. Okay, so for our L2, we could see that cosine of theta is 2 over L2. So we're going to have cosine of theta is equal to 2 over L2. Easily rewriting each of these in, where in terms of the trigonometric function, we get L1 equal to 10 over sine theta or otherwise 10 cosecant theta 
For L2, we could rewrite that as L2, which will be 2 over cosine theta, or in other words, 2 secant theta. All right, we can build our model. We know that L is equal to L1 plus L2, and we can easily write this as 10 cosecant theta plus L2, which is 2 secant theta. Okay, so for part A, that's what we need to build is the function. Now we have it as it where theta is the independent variable. So L of theta would equal 10 cosecant theta plus 2 secant theta. Now the second part is to find the derivative and apply the first derivative test. Okay, so that's part B. Part B is to find the derivative. So L prime of theta is just equal to 10 times, and the derivative of cosecant is just going to be negative cosecant x, I'm sorry, theta, <laughs> um, cotangent theta, plus 2 times, and then the derivative of secant theta is itself secant theta tangent theta. Okay, and we can always write this a little nicer by just saying L prime of theta is equal to negative 10 cosecant theta cotangent theta plus 2 secant theta tangent theta. And that's part B. That's what part B wants. Okay, and now we're on to part C. Part C says once you find the derivative, now apply the first derivative uh, test by setting your derivative equal to zero and find those critical numbers. Okay, so part C, which we'll do over here, is now we're going to go ahead and find critical numbers and apply the first derivative test. Okay, so taking L prime of theta equal to negative 10 cosecant theta cotangent theta plus 2 secant theta tangent theta. And let's go ahead and rewrite this. So what we want to do is set this equal to 0, and then let's go ahead and rewrite this. And in order to rewrite this, I'm going to put everything in terms of sine and cosine. And when I do that, you'll see that it works out really nice and easily to solve for. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll get negative 10, and I'll start here. I'm going to have some fractions. So cosecant is sine on the denominator. Cotangent is going to be the reciprocal function of tangent, so it'll be cosine on the numerator. and then times sine in the denominator. So this part here in the denominator is the cosecant theta. Cotangent theta is the cosine over sine theta. right? Plus 2 over, and I'm going to go ahead and put that um, fraction bar. Secant theta is 1 over cosine theta. And then the tangent theta is sine over cosine. So we'll have sine in the numerator times cosine in the denominator. So notice that this part here is secant, and then sine over cosine is the tangent. When I do that, it looks you know, nice. It has negative 10 cosine theta in the numerator over sine squared theta in the denominator plus 2 sine theta in the numerator all over cosine squared theta in the denominator. 
Now at this point, you should feel that you want to combine these fractions into one by getting the LCD. So the common denominator are just the product of the denominators. So here we're going to have to multiply this one by cosine squared and this one by sine squared. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll multiply this one top and bottom by cosine squared and then top and bottom here by sine squared. And then we'll write it all under the same denominator. So now we get this equal to negative 10 cosine squared times cosine gives us cosine cubed theta plus sine theta plus sine squared theta is a sine cubed theta, so 2 sine cubed theta, all over the same denominator of sine squared theta cosine squared theta, all equal to 0. And again, all we're doing is finding you know, keep your eye on the prize, the critical numbers. Recall that when you have a rational function that the only time that the rational function is zero is when the numerator is zero. So let's go ahead and do that and set the numerator equal to zero. So we get negative 10 cosine cubed theta plus two sine cubed theta. And now we can go ahead and solve. So I'll go ahead and add 10 cosine theta, uh, cosine cubed theta to the left equal to positive 2 sine cubed theta. And I'm going to go ahead and divide um, each side by cosine cubed. So we get 10 equal to 2 sine cubed theta over cosine cubed theta. Then I'll go ahead and divide by 2 each side or multiply by one half. So then I get five on the left equal to sine cubed over cosine cubed, which is tangent cubed theta. We could see now that the cube root of five is equal to tangent theta. And if we wanted to go one step further, then we say theta is equal to inverse tangent of this cube root of five. Now what we want to do is test this, right, and make sure that this theta does make the length of the ladder a minimum if the angle, if this theta makes this angle such that this ladder is the shortest ladder that will go over a 10 feet wall into a building, then we know we have the right theta and we can find the actual length of the ladder. But we have to verify that this theta is the right theta that will minimize the length of the ladder. We could do this a couple of ways. We could apply the first derivative test such that this would be our critical number, inverse tangent of cube root of 5, and take test values on each side. So inverse tangent of cube root of 5 is about 1.042. So that means we could take, um, for our derivative, we could take something like, um, a little bit larger than 0, maybe 0.1, and over here maybe 2. So if we put 1 into the calculator, um, into the derivative, right, and such that we would put 0.1 into the derivative, we get um, a negative value. Oops, it's not right. If we put 2 into the derivative, which the derivative function, which is this here, then we get, um, or this one, 
in terms of sine and cosine, then we get a positive number. And this would imply that our original ladder function is decreasing to the left and increasing to the right, which in fact would make this a minimum theta value to um, minimize the length of the ladder. Okay, so now we're ready to go. We verified our results. So I just want to make sure we understand that this part is just verifying the first derivative test to verify. And it should be all calculator work. Usually just plug and chug and see the sign of the derivative and then determine what the original function is doing around this critical number. And we verify that at this critical number would um, minimize the length of the ladder. So therefore we can use this value here to find the length of the ladder. Now I don't want to use the approximation value only. I only got that, use that to grab uh, numbers, uh, test values on each side. We always want to use exact and round in the end. Okay, great. So now what we can do is answer the question. Right? That's what we always want to do. So now we actually get to answer the question for part C. So since theta is equal to the inverse of cube root of 5, which is in you know, the domain, it's, it ver we verified it, it all works out. Now we go ahead and find the length of the ladder. So the ladder would be where theta has to be inverse tangent of the cube root of 5. Okay, so in doing that, we get, again, using that equation, 10 cosecant of inverse tangent of the cube root of 5 plus 2 times the secant of, again, inverse tangent of cube root of 5. If we go ahead and put that in the calculator, and we want to be very careful when we do, we want to make sure that the calculator is in radians. I just always like to make sure that that's true. And then when I put it in, then I should get a, a length for a ladder that is approximately um, 15. 0.546 feet. And I just plug and chug into the calculator, which the student can do, and then get that length. So this is part C. So there's all three parts that you need. Here's A, B, and C. Now C wasn't as simple as A and B. I feel C was a very long process compared to A and B. Now I think once you have A and A, you can go ahead and start applying to your, working towards your goal, which was to minimize the length of the ladder. I think the key thing was to see a smaller right triangle in that top corner along with the larger blue right triangle. But once we got them in terms of L1 and L2, we were able to set up a function, get a derivative, and set it equal to zero to find a critical number and test it, and then plug and chug to find that ladder. I hope this is helpful.